Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. These are sometimes a little strange to do because I can see a number of you out there, but I won't actually be able to um, chat with you or see anything through the control panel because it's on my other screen and I wanted to maximize a painter on this screen so I can go through what I did for this, uh, show you how I would texture it some because I've left that uh, to when I usually do, which is at the very end. And uh, just, you know, fill in any gaps, answer questions, whatever I can do. Uh, get you excited about digital painting, um, anything I can do. I will go through, first of all, just basically what the painting is, why I've arranged it like I have. And then I will uh, take some questions if there are any. And then I will go back through and start a little texturing. I'll look at some of my brushes. If you don't know how um, creating a custom palette works, it's really easy. You just pick on something you want, pencil or paper texture here in this case, hold the shift key and drag it off. And uh, I don't want that one, so I'm gonna drag it off again. And brushes do the same. I can take here and hold the shift key and drag it off. And it will give me a nice preview of the stroke, but I find I do best if I can read it. Uh, I work on a, real high resolution monitor and sometimes my old eyes don't see the stroke real well and then just hold shift and drag them off. So I've put most of the brushes that I use used in this piece right on this side and then some particle brushes on this side and I'll, I'll show you those after a brief break. Basically I use a paper texture that's here. I will close this because I don't need it right now. Um, I just use the standard paper texture and then I've got all these that I will use to texture the creature. And I've got some here that I will use to do the same thing. What I've done is I've kept him on three separate layers. So I've got my foreground. Of course, I hid the foreground so you can't see it until, you know, then I need to show you. Oh, one, one more thing. I have to uh, apologize in advance, maybe um, my Little French Bulldog is um, sleeping by my chair here, and sometimes he snores like a chainsaw. So um, if I have to pause and shoo him away or wake him up, uh, that's, that's what, it's not me snoring, I promise. It's really not me. So the foreground's on one layer, the back, uh, the character's on one layer, and the canvas is on one layer. Now the canvas, you can see here, and a lot of things are happening because I use a lot of custom made image hose nozzles. So these thorny trees and branches and these weird little grass things, all of that stuff is stuff I've made. And I will do it on separate layers, but I will merge them pretty regularly. I don't like having to scroll through a whole lot of layers to get to where I want to go. So I will simplify it down as much as I can as I work. I am really, really happy with Corel's feature up here, the iterative save. I use this constantly. So as I was doing this character, every time I hit something I liked and I thought about making a big change, I keyboard shortcut it and save a version of it. And then right after I made the change, if I liked it, I'd save another version. So I probably have just of this piece alone, 60 to 80 saved versions. And it's how I manage uh, my layers as much as painting on the layers because it is pretty quick to move around, do things, and I don't have to search a lot. I know, I know where I'm working. So that's kind of my general workflow. When I do a webinar like this, I will try to remember to navigate up to the menu items so that I'm not just doing keyboard shortcuts. If I do one, I will try to remember to let you know I've done one. So that's my general work uh, workflow on this. The size of this is not really a huge image, but it would print nicely up to about 18 by 24, 16 by 20, without changing the size much. I work about that size because I don't like to zoom in more than about 200%, 400 at the most. So I will zoom in a little bit here. Right now it's at 33%. Zoom in a couple times. A 
couple more. So here is, you know, 100%. Uh, I don't like to work much more than 200% because I find that uh, anything over 200%, I start to hit the point of diminishing returns. Um, for example, in 2015, when Corel used uh, my image, this little dark queen kind of person on their on the product, it in a print you can't see the freckles on her nose, but in the screen you can see the freckles on her nose, and that's just a limitation of working too big or or in too close. So I don't do that much. I also go out, zoom out a lot because I really believe that if you're getting out about postage stamp size and you can understand your image, then the values are working, the colors are working, everything's working pretty good. And so I'm constantly stressing that with my students. Um, currently I am the illustration program representative at Salt Lake Community College. It's, I love it. Um, and actually, I'm teaching digital painting uh, this semester. So anyway, that is my general workflow. If there's a quick question or two, I can answer it for you, or I'll just dive into the texturing. Well, I'm taking a look here, and they're wondering what kind of tablet you're using. I must be a real old school because um, while I have uh, Cintiq, and I have a HP ZBook tablet uh, for my laptop, and I have a Dell Canvas. I end up, for most of my work, working on a large Wacom Intuos tablet. Uh, I find I don't like my hand blocking what, uh, what I'm seeing. I don't really like my hand, even on LED surfaces, that just feels a little warm to me. I don't like wearing a glove because then it's really warm to me. And I started out using tablets back when it was only like CalComp and I had to put hearing aid batteries in it. So I, I'm just very, very used to it. I work on the others um, when I when I need to. So my setup here is I've got two 27 inch monitors, um, large Wacom tablet, a uh, keyboard that has lots of different buttons like everybody else's, but I've also got a point of sale keyboard where I can program individual buttons in. I don't do that when I'm uh, demoing like this because that really makes things confusing. And that's about it. You know, I've got the regular scanners and things. I've got a nice fast computer, so everything works really good for me. The only, thanks Don, the only other questions are really related to your process. So how did okay. you start? Are you using image hoses? That kind of thing. What size is the document? So I'll let you go forward and then we can address those later. Okay, if I can show image hose things that I'm using right now, which is fine. In fact, I kept off one of my Don's veggie hose, very green, which is the nozzle or the brush that I use. This is the libo here. Let's see. Well, if I could get to it, I need to show my library as much as anything. Oh, drag it down. So you'll see here, all of these things are image hoses that I used here and there on this image. I've got, I, I, I decided at the last minute that I wasn't gonna add a layer of flies buzzing around him since he kind of lives in a swamp, he might be stinky, um, but I'll put them in real quick right now for you guys. So I've got flies here, I've got flies here, I've got some little tiny flies somewhere Maybe it's up here, bones, Casey eats. Okay, so I've got this little tiny fly nozzle that I made myself. And I got the brush and I would do this on a new layer. So you can see I could add a whole bunch of flies around him if I wanted to. If I don't like it, I'll backspace it. You know, maybe they wanna fly in around. Um, so 
then I'd erase them where I want. I don't want them covering the creature, but uh, they're really small. They're not obtrusive. That's what I will do. I'm uh, picking, you know, probably not the color I would use, but that shows generally what I'm doing. I'm, back, I'm just clearing that. The background itself are these, not, these big nozzles. Um, they don't look right because um, something the way I save them, but they do work. So let me make it big. And so I will paint with these randomly across everything. And the grain with nozzles actually is looking at the secondary color and not a paper texture. So I want to be able to change that and paint with it. I've got the brush so it paints with a little bit of color variability in it. So it doesn't all look real boring. I've also got smaller thorns. And so I'll layer these on different layers. And you can see the end result up here. I will uh, soften them a little bit, push them back. I may put them on, I may change this layer to uh, multiply or I use multiply screen, colorize, gel, and the default most. And then I will lower the opacity. And I start layering them from the far back ones to the closer ones. I will even if I'm not actually going to paint it anymore, I will transform and just I'll just make them work for me. I enjoy uh, digital a lot just because I have this option of being able to, oh, here's some big flies, um, being able to scale things. Oh, that didn't work very well. Let me change it back to default. So I'd spread them out and I wouldn't want to vary as much. So my process is just like I would in a, a traditional painting, I start uh, from the background and the darkest things and the biggest shapes and I work till I get to the finished area. And then I will start to add some of the little textures and things you can see behind the character here, some of these little streaks and these little dots. All of this stuff is added as I'm getting toward the end. These vines are actually a brush I'll show you. And the creature now, he is a scanned pencil sketch. Most of my digital work starts out as a scanned pencil sketch. So you can still see some of the pencil strokes in here. I tend to like that. I kind of like uh, my strokes, and I will even use a brush to uh, emphasize, bring some of them out where it makes sense. And then I will start laying colors over and blending. The only thing I have to deal with with this is outlines. And I could have cleaned up the outlines in this a little better. Initially, I did have the horns on a different layer than the character himself. And that is because I knew that I was going to want to do some uh, adding textures and things to the horns, and I wanted to be able to do it without worrying about painting over him. This is also uh, part of the process in that I will come in here, hold down the control button, and click on the thumbnail of the layer over here, and you see it selected it. It's a real important part, and I keep updating the selections. I will inverted a lot of time. And so now I will select and I'll save it. And what will I call it? Well, I've chosen everything. Let me cancel for just a sec so you can see it. By inverting it, I've chosen everything on that layer but the monster himself. And that's an important thing for me because I will save it as clear background. Whoops, I spell really bad. Back gourd, no. Okay, you can spell as bad as you want if you just remember how badly you spell. 
I will also sometimes work with the selection active and I will hide the marquee. This is one thing that can uh, kind of stumble you if you're new to painter because you'll come in here and you'll paint and wait, wait, it's not painting on the character that I wanted. And that's because there's still a selection going on even though I'm on the correct layer. So if you can't paint where you want, that's because you've got a selection. So anyway, let me um, deselect control D. And so the reason I do this is, let me get, this is kind of the general brush I used. I don't have to worry, maybe the airbrush is better. Yeah, the airbrush is better. So if I want to shade him, I would probably create a new layer, but I can come in and do all this painting. And I don't have to worry about the edges because then all I come in and do is load that selection that I just created. And then I backspace it. So it's really nice way to uh, paint really loose and sloppy and not worry about what you're doing. So I'm just undoing back out of it. I use undo, but not um, in a significant amount of steps. I try to uh, use maybe less than five or 10 steps, but uh, sometimes I get really messed up and do it too. So that's the general process. I work till I get to up the close layer up here and the creature. These are the layers where I want the most detail to be in these front ones. And I want the back layer just to support my character. I decided early on the colors I was going to use. I'm quite fond of uh, green, blue, uh, purple color schemes and some yellow. So kind of split complementaries. So I kept the brightest colors just in a few areas and everything else is a little more subtle and I'm getting the background color into the character and get the character's color into the background here and there. So real traditional art way of working. Um, I'll texture, I'll put some texture on him now. I didn't do that because that is the end result. Are there any last questions before I move on? I have a question for you, but it's pretty in depth. Um, so of course everybody is curious about how you make the image hose or nozzles oh. and i don't know if that's something you plan to go into i wasn't going to but let me do the if everybody likes that i can show it really quick if it's kind of something i can do toward the end i'll i'll do it toward the end it's not difficult um so why don't, why don't you remind me and I'll, I'll just do it toward the end. So if those that really aren't interested, we don't have, I don't have to waste their time. Sure. Sounds okay? good. Okay. So I've got my character and there's no texture to him. There's a lot of different textures I could use. I'm going to use one of these paper textures that I pulled off here. And depending on what or who the character is, I'll, I'll make a new one, I'll use one, I'll probably just use this one right now, and a brush that paints with texture. So I like this real fat chalk brush. Some of these brushes I've made myself, some of them are just regular um, brushes that come with painter. I find they're excuse me, once you understand what the brushes do, it's really kind of fun to uh, make your own. So I'll do that a lot. So I'm gonna create a new layer here, two new layers, that's fine. This one I'm gonna turn into um, multiply. I'm just naming it so I know what it is. And I will change it to a multiply layer. And this one I'm gonna name screen and I will change it to a screen layer. I am terrible about naming my layers. It would save me a lot of heartbreak, I know, but I'm really terrible about it. So at least in this case, I try to do it. And let me get the paper panel up because I might have to change some of the settings. 
I'm going to increase the contrast and lower the brightness some. So now with this brush, and I might have to resize this, I'm getting exactly what I want, which is uh, the scales on this creature. I tend to pressing lighter, letting it build up. What I'm trying to do is establish the scales on the dark side of him. And again, I don't worry too much about spilling over the edges because I will just clear them. One thing I do like to do though, and so I need to do that now, is um, I want to make sure that when I get into smaller areas of this character, that I make the scales a little bit smaller because they kind of do get smaller around the face, into the hand and arms, that kind of thing. But I put them all down as one size first and I don't change them yet because if I do, I may not remember what I scaled the paper texture to. I'll lower the opacity some just to show you what's going to happen. And usually, I will also blur it slightly. I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these little ones in here. I don't want it to carry over into the light area so much because I'm going to do that with the screen layer above. So if I find any of the dark areas carrying into the screen, I will erase them a little bit. And I probably lost a little too much on here, so I'll raise the opacity a bit more. And like I say, I might blur it some. And that's not too bad. I'll, I'll go ahead and go with that. Now in the screen layer, I don't even have to change the color. I lost my cursor. Oh, there it is. I picked the same brush again. I've changed the screen layer. And I forgot to do one other thing. So I will come up here and I will invert the paper texture. And this is what I will use to fill in mostly the light areas. And I'll bring it into the darker area some to make some of the little bumps stand up. And in the lighter areas, I may press a little harder. I may even change color a little bit to make things a little more interesting. When I've got this set, I'm holding Control-Alt and dragging with um, my stylus. I want more of the bumps in the lighter areas. And I may or may not blur those. I tend to leave the lighter areas less blurred than the darker ones. But I do need to erase a couple little things. So I usually have eraser drug out onto here. Oh, there it is. OK. That'll work. And I don't want these really, really light areas interfering with my darks. So I try to keep them a little bit more separate. But I like them showing up. Once I get these two layers done, if I want to do smaller areas, I'll change the scale of the paper. And I try to go in pretty uh, quarters or something, a little more memorable. So I'm not always thinking about it. That was really good. If I just move the slider, I tend to get some really random number that may or may not, I may not remember what it is. So I'll go here and I'll do the dark now up in these other areas of the character. Using the same brush, 
really the same colors, although I'll go ahead and pick it. Wrong, wrong layer. That's why I label them. Now, you don't have to change the scale. You just do whatever you want. That's really the beauty of it. Um, it's so wonderful to be able to do this because, frankly, there's no way in the world I would paint these scales traditionally. I just wouldn't have the patience to do it. Most of the time, I'll do it on a brand new layer, but just because I don't want to bore you too much. I will do it on here, the same layer. And the reason I'll do it on a different layer is because I do want to scale it a little bit or no, blur it. I'll go ahead and blur it anyway a little bit. But not so much because I don't want to lose all the little ones or the bigger ones. Okay, then I'll invert it and move to my screen layer. And I'm just trying to touch mostly the lighter high edges. In a lot of cases, uh, I'm probably going a lot more bold with these than I normally would because I like them to be really pretty subtle for the most part. And I could load the selection to clear all this off, but with just a few little hangovers, it's not uh, it's not a big deal to clean them up with a brush. And then I will, I want to get the dark off his eyes there and the light. I will go ahead and soften it a little bit. And I'll combine them down onto the canvas underneath or drop them. And so you can see why I wait till the end, because if I do this, when I'm just starting out the image, it doesn't do me any good. It may be fun and I may enjoy doing it, but I'm going to have to come back and paint it again because I'll obliterate all of this stuff that I'm doing. Just getting a few of these little darker ones out of the lights. And I think I got a few too many lights. So it's it's all a matter of what you want. Uh, there's no right or wrong. It is what you want. So I've got it, these two ready. I'm going to make them a bit more subtle because I'm going to show you a couple other these brushes and things that I will use. I don't like the lights there or the darks there. So I'll select both of these. Now I can't really take them and uh, collapse them well because of the differing types of, I guess I could just do it, see what happens. So that's what happens. Well, that may be kind of intriguing. It's not exactly what I want. So I'll undo that. And so I will make sure that I drop them right on to um, this layer, uh, the main layer. And then I won't have any of that problem if I can get them all selected right. And here, collapse the layers. So now I've still got, um, they, they look like they should and what I wanted them to look like. So on um, what else I might do on here, I've got uh, several brushes that I've built that I'm just looking to see what I want to use. And this variable splatter skin is just a smaller version of variable splatter. And I use this for doing, again, texturing, but it would be more like 
freckles and things. Let me see what it looks like. So this is exactly what I would do. I may pick a lot of different colors. And I do like to vary the color. I like to keep my brightest colors usually on the edge that terminates between the light and shadow. That is in real life where you will find the brightest colors. So I try to do that. Obviously, I didn't do it right here, but I will try to a lot. Oh, and make sure you switch your color so you paint with the one you want. That's always a nice touch. So I'll get lots of freckles on him. Zoom in so you can see. A um, lot of kind of differing values. And I can come in and change. You know, I could do this on separate layers. And I probably would most of the time. But this will work OK. And I will. Decide how opaque I want it. I try to, if I'm, um, when I'm doing this, I try to default or if I'm going to make an error, I want to make an error that I am not using too much texture. Too much texture can just, um, just kind of ruin, uh, take over a picture. And so I will try to err on the side of good judgment. Um, since I don't do that usually, I try to remember to do that. And I'm not worrying about all of the little ones that spilled over. And there are a few of them. You hide the canvas. So you can see, oh, you know, I've got something happening out there too. That could be on another layer. But you can see right around him these little layers. I mean these little spots. I will get rid of those by loading the selection. Whoops. So I'm just getting rid of the dark ones now that are down, or the light ones that are down in the darker areas of the character. Soften them if you want to. And when you're ready, he doesn't want stuff on his eyes. Then you just come in and load the selection. Reselect my work. It was still the last active one. I'm on the right layer, and I'll just backspace it to clean up any junk that uh, spilled over. If I get what I like there, I'm just touching up. I see a few that I don't like here and there. Then I'll go ahead, select both the layers, and collapse them. Now, what I ought to be doing is doing the iterative save. So I will do that. And it automatically just adds a number, another number. So I've got a bunch of preliminary ones that I did, but I guess I've only got 30 that I've been saving as I painted. Then I come in, and I do love the glow brush. You know, it's a, like a guilty pleasure for me. And I can on this layer, making sure it's the correct one. This is the thing I will use to make interesting highlights because I love the way it picks up and burns the color into the edge. And it also makes really nice highlights wherever else you want them. I probably should use the same colors in the skin areas. OK. So that's, that's, for the most part, how I tend to add some texture. Now, again, if you look at all the different paper textures that I have, and like some of that, um, I've made a whole bunch that I can use. So I don't really ever limit myself. I should have erased some of this in his arm, because that looks a little wonky to me. Um, in fact, I don't like a lot of that, so I'll back off. I will use the same, uh, this variable splatter brush. 
uh, to add some on darks on the points of the horns. So let me add, and this is just personal preference. I don't have to, but uh, I kind of like it. So I'll go with multiply. I won't pull them all the way down, but sometimes I'll add this kind of thing on the points. I don't know why. I think I once saw some Texas longhorns or something where the tips of their horns got kind of dark and splotchy. And probably ever since then, I just thought it looked really cool. And I'll erase just uh, over the highlights and things. To clean up, I will zoom in closer. I will, of course, have to erase any of this spillover where I don't want it because even if I just clear the background layer, it won't clear anything that's on the figure. And I am working uh, rather fast here. Usually I'm quite a bit slower and methodical. Um, and I'm still a whole lot faster than if I did it traditionally. But I kind of don't like to have to back up and redo work. So I try to work in a relatively uh, smart fashion most of the time. So I'll load that. I'll reselect that. And backspace it. And so now I've got some spots on the top of his horns. I think I want to darken them a little bit more. So I'll add some airbrush to them. And you could do this on a regular layer. I'm just There's so many, there are so many ways that you can uh, accomplish things digitally that uh, you should experiment as much as you have tolerance for and find your own way. There's no necessarily right or wrong way. There's just different ways. We've got a lot of good, uh, very good friends that uh, are very good digital painters. And we all do things slightly different. The funny thing is, most of the time, the end result supports the goals that we wanted anyway. So it's just almost wording, wording the phrase a little bit differently. That's a little too much. OK, so merge that layer down with this one. or collapse them together and do another save. And one other thing I want to show you with just these regular brushes. If I can remember what I was thinking. This will be right. Say I want to uh, build up a lot of like little pock marks or something in the skin. I can do it this way. Actually, I can do it with the variable splatter, too. So I'll create a new layer. And I will paint these little dark holes. You can tell I get in the middle of a sentence and I drift a little bit sometimes. I touch the stylus to the screen, and all of a sudden I quit remembering there's somebody actually maybe listening to me. That's what I want. I'll duplicate that layer. So now it's really dark. That could be good or bad, depending on what I'm looking for. I will take this layer that I just made, and I'm going to lock the transparency on it. So I can come in here and paint over this. I'll use a different brush so I can get it done real quick.
but I'll paint it with one of the lighter colors I've got here, and I'll increase that even a little more. Quite often, just so you know, I don't leave these as RGB. I like them as hue, saturation, and value, because if I want to increase the value or decrease it without changing the hue or saturation, this is a whole lot more accurate than me just picking it. So I will use these sliders, and I really never use the RGB sliders, so this works just fine for me. So now I'm painting over all those little dots. And I'll zoom in to show you how this actually works because they're pretty small on this guy. Okay, then I'll come in and I'm gonna wanna move the bottom layer here. Let me zoom in and I just want to offset it a little bit. So it could look like bumps in this case or if I offset it the other way, I can make it look like holes depending on where the light's coming from. So these down, as they start to get dark, look more like holes. I probably need to duplicate this layer. That's a little better. And so if I need to paint a lot of little holes or divots or something, that's, that's what I'll do. I will also make sure that I will erase um, where I want because I'm not gonna need all of it and I will change the color. So that's really a lot right now. Whoops, that was wrong. When I get them like I want them, too many undos. Then I'll merge these two or collapse these two. Can you tell I'm teaching a Photoshop class right now? I keep using Photoshop talk. I have, you know, okay, I'm wandering a little bit, but uh, many, many years ago, I'm just double, no, I don't want him in the mix. When I was at a convention, I, Tanya might have even been there, I don't remember, um, but it was, I was standing there painting, and uh, a young guy was watching me, and that's fine, you know, I was doing what I was supposed to, which was kind of get people in to see what was going on. And he watched me for about 20 minutes while I was painting whatever I was painting. I don't remember exactly what it was. And he said to me, you know, he, he was kind of trying to, I don't know what he was trying to do. Anyway, that's not right. He said to me that there wasn't anything I could do in Painter that he couldn't do in Photoshop. And so actually having, knowing both the program some, I didn't really even say anything to him. I just went in and I rotated the canvas. And it was a long time before, it was two or three versions before Photoshop actually came out with that. And so I looked at that and then I did something else and I don't remember what, um, and he just walked off. So you got to be careful. Oh, another story. I have no reason to tell it other than it was interesting. A number of years ago, too, I also went in, out um, and looked at a guy's posts online because he was getting really rave reviews about these fantastic celebrity portraits he was doing. And so I, I had to see him um, because I'm always interested in good art. You know, it's... I like to collect it, uh, you know, collect people's images. I like to do all that stuff. So I went and looked at what he was doing, and he was using Painter. And that's really part of the reason I wanted to go see it, too. Snap this around. So I went and looked at his stuff. And he was using Painter, and he had uh, his canvas on one side. Sorry, my arm's crossing my um 
my arms crossing the buttons. Since I'm right-handed and I'm painting on my left screen, I keep rubbing the buttons. Anyway, he was painting this really fantastic portrait of some celebrity and I saw why people liked it. And he was only working on one half of the canvas and on the other half, he had just this grundle of um, color sets, uh, you know, that he was picking from. The only problem was uh, because I knew the program, I looked at it and immediately knew he was cheating because he was going and picking the swatches is true, but I could see the outline of the brush he was using and it was a clone brush. So um, I was the one rave review that said liar, liar, pants on fire. And that probably wasn't, I didn't need to do that, but I did it. Okay. So there's creature with some textures added some textures added on why well, deleted something anyway added to the horns i can show you i want to show you some of these uh, particle brushes but i want to if there's any questions just real quick on on what i've been doing i uh, good time to speak up since i'm ending yeah. i'm getting close to my end of time i know okay um, there are still some questions about, because you kind of jumped in mid process, how did you start the sketch? Was it in painter or did you hand sketch and import it? Let me go ahead and show it to you. I've got a version here that we pick it up on the other screen and I'll drag it over and show it again I, I do almost everything from pencil sketches because i frankly carry uh, some pencil and paper with me everywhere or pens and i i draw constantly so uh, it's my biggest source of what i what i can do sometimes i will do it um, well i ride the train to teach and stuff i'll, I'll draw and do that okay so here it is uh, let me see if I got the original sketch. This is a, one I started working on and then I changed my mind a whole lot. So I'll load this one. Okay, so there is the actual original sketch just with some color put over it. And I always keep, not very obvious in this one, I always keep the original drawing in a separate layer locked so I don't paint on it, but so that I can refer back to it if I want to. Here you can see um, my pencil strokes a lot. I never erase. So all of these construction lines and things, they end up being some of the little junky stuff that, that you'll see wandering around in whatever I do. So I might have, no. I'm sure I've got the pencil drawing somewhere. It's just in a different folder. But while I can draw just fine on, on the computer, most of the time I'm sitting drawing in my lap uh, when I've got just, just a free minute. And I actually prefer it. Um, I guess it's because I'm an old traditional guy at heart and um, I want to do it, you know, what I do as traditional as possible. So. Um, honestly, John, I think a lot of traditional artists still like to start their sketch and then bring it into painter. I find that a lot. Well, um, I know that the very best digital artists I know, and I, I know a lot of them, um, they, that's how they work. They draw and then they scan the sketch and, you know, work on it, refine it, clean it up, do whatever. But I do know two or three really, really good digital artists that they just draw on the screen because, you know, they slouch down in their lounger and scoot on up so the table's hitting them about mid chest and their arms up on it and they just start drawing away, hitting the buttons and drawing and it works really well for them. I just, I just like to sit in an easy chair and draw on my lap. Um, all of my drawings and sketches are on eight and a half by 11 paper. A lot of them on uh, will be on uh, toned paper. I, I do a lot of stuff on toned paper. 
I'm well, I'm yakking at you. I'm looking to see if I can find just a couple of recent ones that I can drag in and, and show you uh, what I start with. So, and well, some other questions for you. I know we're at the top of the hour now, so oh, okay. <laughs> we're running out of time, but I want to let you know that um, you, there's a lot of positive comments coming in here, and thanks so much for everything that you've shared today. Um, people have a ton more questions that I know is more in depth. For instance, how do you create the nozzle? Um, in the background there, are those particle brushes that you yeah. use? Yes. Let me just show you a couple of those. I am more than happy to um, continue on for a little bit for those that still want to hang out and, and build a image hose and that, and that kind of thing to show you. Uh, it's, it's no problem at all. Uh, or, you know, if you want to um, send me an email, I can answer the emails. I actually think that we probably have a tutorial that you There's have created, yeah, that shows how to make an image hose. Okay, so, so I, I can okay. dig that out and add it to the follow-up email for everybody after this. Okay, okay. So this is... A vi the vine brush it's a particle brush and actually I created this brush so it's nice that I could use it um, I made these things with it so I've created a new layer I'll pick a oh, middle color here in pink so you can see what it does and by varying my pressure I can make these rough kind of vines And so it's really, I really like this thing because I can come in and I can pause and keep going. And, and of course, if it's green, it actually looks much more like a vine than what I'm doing here. Um, no, but more. it's good to make it stand out for this purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So I, I use this brush a lot. Again, I do a lot of manipulating because if I turn this off, you can see... You can see it here, but I've, you know, lowered the transparency. I've done all these things uh, to make it work like I want. Um, most of these are brushes I've made just because I, I couldn't pull them all out that I use. I use a lot of people's brushes, but this is one. These are ones I like um, and use a lot because I made them. So I use this one a lot. I would use it to do some background kind of elements. And again, I would manipulate it, uh, changing the color, the size, all of that kind of thing. Uh, caveman, let's see, these are all ones I would use to add textures to him. So let me create another layer and move it above him. So which one have we got? Freckle. It's kind of a nice, it's random like the variable splatter. Um, with a lot more freckles or whatever you want them to be. And I, I do like this brush. Uh, scars, if I wanted to make. Oh, somebody asked, how do you make a scar? How do I make a scar? I use the scar brush. <laughs> uh, let's see, maybe scrapes is the one I would use more. That's the one, okay. So how I would do it. Let me backspace this. This will be like a three-step tutorial, okay? So, and I do it just like I did the, the freckles. So I would get a dark red and draw a few scrapes. I'd make sure they don't overlap where I don't want them to. Then I duplicate the layer and I would lock the transparency and then with a regular brush, I would go in and paint red on them. And at the end of this, I'd probably go in because the creatures actually, the form turns, I would go in and shade where it's a little darker and lighten where it's a little lighter. So now it's just a matter of kind of clicking and moving. Actually, I might want 
the layers reversed. I'd have to play with it. But this is how I would do it. All and right. because they stand out a little too cleanly, I would soften them a little bit and I would erase a little bit. Um, but in particular with these, these brushes, they work really, really good um, for this kind of thing. I couldn't paint this random. Uh, I know I can paint kind of random so nobody understands what I'm doing, but that's just too random. This brush I would use if I was making, if I didn't have the transparency locked, if I was making maybe hair. These are, these are really useful brushes once you get used to them. And in fact, I think I called this one caveman because it kind of looks like caveman hair to me. That's an awesome brush. I, yeah. I know you could go on and on, and I know the questions could also go on and on, but what I'm realizing right now is that we always have a variety of skill levels, and there's a lot of people that are interested. We've had a couple intermediate webinars lately, so maybe going back to the basics from Sketch and just you know how you did this beautiful colorizing, um, at a very basic level is of interest. And so it's things for me to think about. I know you can't address all of this right now and people are interested in going beyond the level that you went right now. So it's hard to cover everything in one hour session. Yeah, you did the, a fantastic job. Just the creature in the background were about five hours of work, just getting the sketch in, doing the background, painting the creature, doing the foreground, making all the layers work. So it is a lot, and that's why I didn't want to do it from a start here, because I would have never gotten to showing you uh, some of this kind of stuff. I can. Right. Exactly. So we do our best, everybody, to try and accommodate a variety of topics and levels, but I am always open to your feedback and I do look at the feedback that you provide in the registration. Um, so John, all I can say to you is thank you so much. Um, we, we always enjoy having you. You have so much knowledge to share. And I will send you the transcript from the webinar so that you can see how much everybody enjoyed it because it was really fantastic. Thank you, and if, if you do email me, I get a lot of emails that I don't know who they are. Um, if you email me and you say you're in the webinar, I'll make sure I answer you within a day or two. Otherwise, sometimes I just ignore the emails because there's just too many of them. Um, to send All right, me. so guys, if you want to email Don, you have his email. I'm not going to give it out right now. Um, <laughs> put painter webinar in subject line so that Don knows. And do you want me to show um a nozzle real quick i've got i've got what i can do i mean i've got stuff I can that do. Is entirely up to you don i know you know a lot of people they know we're we're eight minutes beyond the session if you want to do it i'm i'd be thrilled if not um i i'm pretty positive that we have a tutorial from you i'm Either way is fine. Take me two minutes, but. Um, All right, two minutes. Let's do it. Okay. Two minutes. Let me close this guy. Uh, I'm going to iterative save because I might want something that I did on him. Okay, so to create a nozzle, it's no problem at all. I'm just going to open or create a new image to show you what I do. And then I'm dragging in a layered file. And so here's, here's all my characters for a bat nozzle, and they're all in a group. So there's all of these bats on a transparent black ground in a group. They have to be in a group. Then you show your nozzle, and I will, I've already got them in a group, so it won't matter. You select one, and then you go to the menu and load nozzle or make nozzle from group. Then you get this really weird looking thing and it looks perfect. So don't worry about that. And then what I will go and do is do save this and I'll do a save as, and I will 
I always label it nozzle because I don't know. Um, I, I never know just looking at the files unless I can see thumbnails of them if it's a nozzle file or regular file. So I'll go save and then to load it, I'll load the nozzle. There it is. Opened it. And at this point, I can get rid of this. I want to save this. Maybe it will paint with it. Let me look. I might have to save it first. Okay, let me save the nozzle. Oh, I got to get the uh, nozzle brush. So make sure you got a nozzle brush. Otherwise, loading a nozzle doesn't do you any good. So now I've got green bats. And then you go through and just tweak it so that it is working however you want it to work. Oh, and it's the secondary color. I keep forgetting that. That's a nozzle. Once you've got it made, you can just, you don't even have to have it open. Once you've painted with it, then you want to go and add the nozzle to the library. Save it as bat nozzle, and it will save it under whatever the active um, library is. So I'll click OK, and there it is. You can drag them around if you want to your own library, and you can export them if you want. Wow, that was so fast, Don. I told you, <laughs> two minutes. In fact, if, anybody, awesome. if anybody wants some of these nozzles, I will email them to you. I don't think I don't think the library's that big. So just don't right. post them, just don't post them as free downloads. Hey, thanks everybody. I hope I didn't drone on too bad. It's uh, I enjoy doing this. It's fun. Um, I enjoy starting with beginners all the way up to really getting in and trying to, you know, get the fine finishing uh, finishing end of things done. So uh, it's been fun. Thank you. Um, appreciate your time today. Mm -hmm.